Um, I am currently the Deputy Chair of the Environment Committee, as Josie just said, um, but uh, when I was first elected in May uh, 2016, um, I actually became the Chair of the Environment Committee within about five days, um, at the persuasion of my colleagues. Um, and obviously, coming into City Hall at a time when um, there was a new mayor um, is a huge opportunity to influence what's going to go into um, quite a wide range of new policies that the mayor was obviously going to produce. Um, Ken had done the same at the beginning of his eight-year period. Boris had done the same at the beginning of his. Um, obviously, we don't know at this point how long um, Sadiq might be the mayor. It might just be the, this four-year period. But he was obviously going to make quite a lot of uh, changes. Um, and the draft environment strategy didn't come up until August 2017. So that gave us quite a, a period in the, in the committee to start to try and influence um, what the mayor was going to be putting into that strategy. Uh, and also what might go into the housing strategy, the transport strategy and the London plan. Um, and I'll come back to that in a, in a minute as to why it's important in those other strategies as well. So the consultation on the environment strategy was August 2017 until November 2017. And I spent quite a lot of time working with a variety of different groups um, across London on making sure that they got some really good, um, good quality responses into the uh, team. Uh, working under the Deputy Mayor for Energy and Environment, Shelley Rodriguez. And that included talking to the London Beekeepers Association and a wide range of other groups to make sure that um, something went in. Um, and then from November 2017 up until um, April of uh, this year, uh, the team went off and kind of got into a darkened room and started analysing all the different comments that had come in. Um, and I then heard from the Pesticide Action Network in, roughly speaking, March, so that was towards the end of that period, um, and I uh, had the discussion about whether or not anyone had put the um, issue about going pesticide-free in as one of the consultation responses, and the answer to that um, from the environment team was no. So I asked uh, uh, if it could be included at that point, and um, as Josie may have said at the beginning, um, they did decide that they would include a reference to that. Now you may not have found it yet, because it is on page 424 <laughs> of a very short document. <laughs> 424, if you want to look for it. And that is actually, it's quite interesting, because that is in chapter 11, which is the chapter that's called Leading by Example. Um, and um, at, in fact, there's a colleague here from uh, for TfL. The the GLA, the Greater London Authority, includes not just the mayor and his team, and not just the assembly and our uh, supporting scrutiny teams, um, but it also includes beyond the Greater London Authority, the GLA and City Hall. Um, it also includes the whole of TfL, and that means all of the, the land that's managed and owned by TfL. The fire authority, so that's all the fire stations. It uh, includes MOPAC, the Mayor's Office for Policing and Crime, slightly different relationship with the Met. Then it's also got the LLDC, which is the London Docklands, um, uh, London uh, Olympic uh, Development, you know, it's the legacy corporation for covering the Olympic Park. And then the OPDC, which is the Old Oak Park Royal um, Development Corporation. So there's actually quite a lot of land involved in that. And the phrase that's been used in the document that says to reduce the use of use of pesticides and peat-based products such as composts. Um, so it's not just talking about pesticides, it's also talking about uh, peat-based composts as well, which I really welcome. Now, um, you know, there are obviously that we've just been uh, listening to Wesley talking about glyphosates, but there are actually 41 products in use across the UK, um, according to the figures I've seen from a 2012 survey. Um, so that's quite a wide range um, of things that we probably might need to start thinking about either reducing um, or cutting out altogether if we can. And I think one of the issues which, um, although the GLA can't enforce what we, we're choosing to do over other boroughs, the, the Mayor does have some powers of enforcement, but um, instructing boroughs or instructing boroughs to put something, it's interesting you're talking about ID Verdi and other contractors, it's actually very easy for boroughs if they wish to put something into a contract when they're letting it, 
you could put in two alternatives into a contract and say, please price this up um, with a pesticide-free approach um, to Isi Verdi and other potential contractors are available. And also, please price up your, um, uh, your, your offer for doing this piece of work um, on, a, on a normal basis. Um, and then you can actually have a look at what the different prices were, if, if any, and then choose accordingly. I think what's really interesting um, is that if you look at uh, Network Rail, Thames Water, the Royal Parks and Environment Agency, they all now have policies that are clearly stating that they want to reduce the use of pesticides. So I think this is a move that is gradually going to spread out and I think starting to write um, things into you know the, the, the contract uh, doc documentation into the preliminaries when you're asking people to bid for contracts is a really good way forward. Um, and outside of London, there's some really good practice starting to emerge. Um, Lewis and, and Weybridge are two that I would uh, commend to you to have a look at. However, I think um, the, the points that were being raised in the questions to Wesley and some of the points that Wesley was making, which is we need more data on the impact on particular pollinators. Um, so I think actually that is an area where the GLA could uh, probably step up now that we've just passed um, the environment strategy and that's now become a, a, uh, the final version. Uh, we've also now got the final version of the transport strategy and the final version of the housing strategy. The London plan will take uh, seemingly forever to um, finally, and uh, we've got to go through the examination public, so that's still going to be um, a lengthy period. But I think having that data, and I think the, the GLA is quite well placed to work with the boroughs um, on um, <coughs> gathering data and storing data, um, and uh, good use of giggle has allowed us to have um, quite good uh, updates on what's going on in terms of open space across across London. But there is just one, one other thing that I would throw in, um, uh, and I was, I was saying I would sort of come back to this in terms of the strategies and the work that um, I've done over the last two years through the committee, but also we can do individual reports as assembly members. Uh, which someone uh, rather grandly christened, uh, christened rapporteurships. I think they'd obviously been to the <laughs> dreadful, they've been to Europe or something like that, but who, who knows. Um, and so we can do individual reports. And I did one that was uh, called Biodiversity in the Mayor's New Housing Developments uh, at Home with Nature. And one of the really important issues for me is about loss of habitat. Because there's not much point <coughs> saying that we want to reduce pesticide use because we want to benefit pollinators if they've literally got nothing that they can go and pollinate. I mean, really, we have to be really, really careful about this. And as you're aware, one of the other areas that the mayor is uh, obviously focused on at the moment is the homelessness and housing crisis generally across the whole of London. Now, if we spend all of our time just uh, agreeing that we're going to do developments that are going to be um, impervious and impermeable, uh, and they don't include any, any element of biodiversity or nature, we're going to have some real problems, for, not just for pollinators, but I would also argue for us and our mental health. So we need to maintain the green spaces that we have, whether they be in metropolitan open land. I've always thought Wormwood Scrubs is a dreadful name. <laughs> it doesn't really give the right impression, does it, of how, how lovely um, it is in parts. Um, but, you know, we have lots of open spaces that we, we need to preserve across London, but preferably as we're remaking London, and every time you walk out of your front door you see the cranes, we need to be incorporating nature into those developments. And one of the things that I commended to the Mayor in the At Home with Nature report was um, looking at what other cities and other countries have been doing about the um, green space factor, which is a technique for measuring the, the fact that you've put some nature into your development and making it obligatory uh, for all developers to put that in. Now, obviously, we have to call it something of our own, so we've called it the urban green factor instead of the green space factor, but I don't care what we call it. Um, it's now in the draft London plan, um, and it's also in the environment strategy. Um, and one of the other things that we've been doing is giving out some money to people in their local neighbourhoods to improve their neighbourhoods. And um, one thing that we have done in Walsworth, which I think has been good, is that if people indicate to the council that they've been um, t starting to take care of the small space at the base of trees, sometimes they indicate it by putting a little fence around it, and planting it with flowers and removing some of the overgrowth at the bottom of trees, and starting to make their neighbourhood um, incorporate some things that might be of interest to pollinators and also might look 
um, rather nice as well. And I think those are the kind of things where we should be supporting people if they want to do that in their neighbourhood. Now, I am no way suggesting that that is uh, some sort of panacea for the fact that local authorities have had the most ridiculous amount of uh, money taken away from them, by, by no means. But I think encouraging people to take ownership of their own neighbourhoods um, is something that we, personally, I, I feel quite strongly about and um, have encouraged over, over my career before coming into City Hall. And certainly it's something, um, you know, having, having the sense that Transport for London is seeing the, the roads and remaking of roads should include biodiversity as well as more bicycle lanes, and that we ourselves can start to bring that biodiversity into our streetscapes, into what can be seen more as part of our overall habitat rather than just being seen as a place for parking endless numbers of privately owned vehicles. Thank you. <laughs>